itself. But coming back yes. to the discussion we're having, I think Imam the Sahib, point I was the, uh, going to raise Nizam. is that the status of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, must be understood very clearly. Mm -hmm. I think in between the lines of these questions which you have read, I could see some people are wondering that how come that after the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we are still mentioning about someone who is a prophet. But actually the word simply prophet could be misleading for some people. Because generally what the people have in mind is that whenever we say somebody is a prophet, they always think of a book coming along with the prophet. And a new While religion. They, yeah. A new religion yeah. starting there. While this is not the case. The books which came from God Almighty, they are very few, limited in number. And the number of the prophets who came from God Almighty, they are according to one hadith, 124,000 prophets came. So it means every prophet does not bring a new law or does not start a new religion as such. But the status of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, must be understood very clearly. It is mentioned in the Holy Quran. And that is mentioned in uh, verse number 70 of Surah Nisa, where Allah Almighty has mentioned, وَمَنْ يُطِي اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ That those people who will obey Allah and this prophet, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What are these what are the blessings which these people are going to get? Four spiritual blessings are mentioned there. That these are the four blessings which will be given to them. The very first being These are the four categories mentioned there. But this word prophet which is used here, this qualifies the previous one or it is qualified by the previous one which says that those who are obedient to Allah and to this prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so it means after the advent of the Holy Prophet sallallahu whenever we can possibly talk about the advent of a prophet, it has to be a subordinate prophet. No independent prophet can ever come. No such prophet can ever come who can claim that I have brought a new religion, I have brought a new book, I am introducing some new faith. No such prophet can ever come. And, that is and the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, founder of the Ahmadiyya Jamaat, never ever claimed mm -hmm. that he has brought a new faith or a new book or he has started a new religion. His status was a subordinate prophet. He was an Ummati Nabi. He was from among the members of the Ummah of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, but he was declared as Ummati Nabi and that was his status. The link between the Nabuwat and the Khilafat is that the Khilafat cannot be established unless the system of Nabuwat is no longer there. So somebody had to be sent by God Almighty as a subordinate prophet because that is the only window open after the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Somebody had to come as a subordinate prophet and when he had to pass away, after that the system of Khilafat was going to start. And that is exactly what mentioned. Summa takunul Khilafatu ala min And that system by the grace of Allah is the Khilafat system which is we are enjoying in the Ahmadi um, Jamaat. And Imam Sahib, we, Dr. Zahid, perhaps I could come to you on this. One of the allegations which is sometimes levied against the Jamaat is that through Hazrat Masih Maud, the promised Messiah, that suddenly a new faith was created, mm. a new religion was born, a new book was created, um, a new kalma mm. was also recited. Mm. Um, can you just clarify for the benefit of everyone, our viewers and beyond, the absolute unequivocal position of where we are? We are oh, Muslims. Of, of and course, we I the mean, same book. ask any, any Ahmadi child. And he will tell you the basis of our religion. So how do you counter it? You know the, that thing where they say, oh, but they're saying something else in the heart. You know, uh, that's an allegation <laughs> obvious, obviously levied. I mean, God can only help those people, I suppose. That's right. I mean, we believe in the same book that was brought down by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We obviously carry out the same duties and functions that a Muslim has to. And they can go to any uh, Ahmadi mission throughout the world and by the grace of Allah, uh, Ahmadiyyat has spread to the corners of the earth. Another prophecy fulfillment of the Promised Messiah alayhi salam. They can see how we pray, they can see how we fast, um, they can see what our book is, they can see what our kalama is. It is written in blazing letters in our mosques throughout the world. And uh, they will be able to realize that it is none other than what the uh, uh, teachings of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were. They can read the writings of the Promised Messiah alayhi salam, and tell us where he has brought a new book, where he has brought a new law, what he has uh, put into Islam. He has been very specific and very rhetorical in this aspect that I have not brought anything new. I have come to reform the Muslims as was the, teach, as was the prophecy of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and this aspect of that we have something else in our hearts and something else on our tongues is uh, totally totally baseless as well and uh, we know of an incident in the life of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when during the course of a battle a, a muslim uh, encountered uh, 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 an opponent and uh, the opponent at the last minute who was about to be slain uh, recited the kalama la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and but despite that the uh, muslim unfortunately killed this uh, man and when they came to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and relayed this to him uh, and uh, the he said oh messenger of allah uh, i thought uh, I, I killed him because he recited the kalama for fear of his life and the prophet kept on repeating did you open up his heart to have a look did you open up his heart to have a look he was so displeased that this companion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i wish that before this day i had not become a muslim because i had seen the prophet so much troubled by this so this is exactly what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was meaning that he was reciting the kalama who were you to say that he was right. reciting from the kalama mm -hmm. from his heart or were they just from his lips exactly. and, and that he, is the same yeah. for the ahmadis as and well and imam sahab perhaps just i mean there's a couple of questions here i know and um, these questions will keep coming we've got a couple of viewers but it's been tragic indeed in the modern yeah. age where we see mosques mm. and the Muslim mosques around the world with la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah being erased through government orders and indeed it's mm. tragic yeah. and has outraged not just Muslim community but communities beyond as well and perhaps if I could come to two questions there uh, yeah. which you know we can take near the end and again I remind viewers that if you do have questions for our next program it's faith matters at mta.tv and the fax number is 4420868780 through 8037 that's fax number 44 for the UK 208-687-8037 but Imam Sahib as I was saying a couple of yes. the questions were on one why do people claim that the Quran published by the Amdiya Muslim community is not correct that comes from Muhammad uh, Lakit Saab and another lady from Safiya Saiba from Morden writes what do you say about the general belief amongst Muslims that the Amdiya Muslim community translates the Quran in a way to better serve their own agenda. I think it follows on from what Dr. Zahid was yes. just saying. I think this is a simply based on misunderstanding. This is the result of the propaganda which comes to the minds of the people. And unfortunately, when they listen something wrong, they hammered into their minds again and again, then unfortunately at the end, they tend to believe that one. That is the only reason for that. The fact of the matter is that the Ahmadiyya Jamaat is in the forefront in the, among the all Muslim denominations in translating the Holy Quran and spreading the message, the word of Allah in the world languages throughout the world. That is one thing. How many languages? 69. 69 Complete yeah. translations have already been mm -hmm. printed and so many are there in pipeline. And the selected verses of the Holy Quran, they are already available in print in 120 languages. So that is about the translation. But the point is that whether our translation is different or wrong, I would say difference, so far as difference is concerned, I must say that there are some places in the Holy Quran where our translation is different from others. But the point is that how can these people think that their translation is a standard one? Mm -hmm. I can tell everybody that if they take the five translations done by various non ahmadi scholars, put them together on the table, all five will be different. If they differ themselves, that how can they say that one of our translation is the standard one, is the correct one, and the Ahmadiyya translation is wrong one. Actually, wherever we differ in any translation with any other scholar, we have got firm reasons for that. In the Tafsir Kabir written by Hazrat Muslim Aud, the second caliph, he has gone into detail to describe the meanings that this word, if we have translated like that, this is based on this reason and this reason, this is supported by that verse of the Holy Quran and that lexicon, all these things are mentioned there. So we do not uh, ever twist any meaning of the Holy Quran for our own purposes. And because just to we be clear, firmly it's believe to the letter exactly the exactly, same. Exactly, this is the word of God, it has to be done very honestly. And I just give you the example which might uh, move the hearts of some people. Hazrat Mawlana Shir Ali Sahib who did the translation of the Holy Quran in English and that his translation is considered to be the best in a way, I mean appreciated uh, throughout the world. He is the one who did the translation when he was living in London. And he has mentioned that uh, every day whenever he came to his desk in the morning before uh, uh, starting the translation work, 
he used to offer two rakats of nafal. Pray to Allah Almighty that, O oh Allah, this is your word, and I am this humble self embarking upon the translation of your word into English. So kindly help me. So with this spirit of dedication and with this spirituality and humbleness, the translation has been done. So all the translations yeah. are there. I MashaAllah, the caliphs, they have done yeah. it. Has I, I think this is a profound, I know we're very running very short of time, and okay. inshallah, we shall, for the viewer's benefit, continue. There are many questions, um, just to reassure the likes of Dr. Muhammad Sadiq from uh, Newfoundland in Canada. Bilal Salim Saab, thank you for your email from the Bronx in New York, um, which were related to the coming, the second coming of Hazrat Isa al Islam, second coming of Jesus Christ. Inshallah, we shall be covering and please these uh, particular issues in future programs. Again, to all viewers, a reminder for your emails is faithmatters at mta.tv. That's faithmatters, one word, at mta.tv. And the fax number, once again, is UK 44208 687 8037. I wish to, if I may, just thank our panelists for today. First of all, Imam Adal Majib Rashid Sahib, thank you for your deep insight into what has been quite a wide ranging dis discussion. Dr. Zahid Saab, again, for your scholarly contribution to various matters, particularly on the issues which are contemporary in some respects, particularly around jihad and suicide bombing. Of course, Maulana Bajwa Saab here, who's the, also the Imam at the largest mosque here in London, the Battle for Two Mosques. Thank you indeed. Uh, by yourself for your contributions and finally I want to thank the viewers for yours without your emails without your questions faith matters wouldn't be faith matters I'm reminded if I may and just quote someone a bit more contemporary we often talk about religion but faith isn't just limited to those who may be representing religion alone um, the words of Martin Luther King perhaps who wrote faith is all about taking that first step even when you don't see the whole staircase in front of you with that, viewers, Jazakumullah, and we look forward to welcoming you again. Does faith matter? Well, faith does matter. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.